special. Fight for the Senate. Georgia decides. And we are just hours away from the final decision on which political party will have control on Capitol Hill for the next two years. Tomorrow, Georgia Republicans and Democrats will vote in two Senate runoff elections. This will be the final stand in the fight for the Senate this election cycle. I'm Tanika Hughes, and Action News Jack's John Bachman is live in Atlanta. And control of the U.S. Senate will have a big impact on how much President-elect Joe Biden can get done in his first two years in office, John. It's why they've spent $500 million on this race, Tanika. Indeed, it is very important. Polls open tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Now, it has been a busy day in Atlanta. Let's start where I am right now. This is where uh, President-elect Joe Biden was uh, here rallying Democrats for the two Democratic uh, candidates here. And now the crowds are gone. It is wrapped up. It's over. The next big event for Georgia is North Georgia tonight at 9 o'clock. President Trump expected to be there to rally Republicans. Also today, I had a chance to go into the office of Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and ask him about the security of this election. But as Secretary of State, I want everyone in Georgia to understand that we can have fair and honest elections. And the person that we declare the winner will be the honest winner for the state of Georgia. So let's walk you through what the balance of power looks like right now on Capitol Hill. The Democrats control the House with 222 seats. It only takes 218 to have a majority there. In the Senate, though, the Republicans hold 50 seats. The Democrats hold 48. So Democrats would need to win both of the seats up for grabs in order to force a 50-50 split. That would give the Democratic Party more influence in that chamber because Vice President-elect Kamala Harris would be the tie-breaking vote. Here are the candidates looking to fill those two Senate seats. None of these candidates got more than 50% of the vote in the general election. Senator David Perdue is running for re-election against Democrat John Ossoff. Perdue is a former businessman who has served the last six years in the Senate. Ossoff has never held public office. Senator Kelly Leffler and Democrat Raphael Warnock will face off tomorrow for the seat that used to be held by Senator Johnny Isaacson. He retired unexpectedly because of health concerns. Governor Brian Kemp appointed Leffler until voters could decide. She has never won a statewide election. Warnock is a pastor of a well-known black church in Atlanta, where the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. used to preach. Action News Jax is covering every angle of the fight for the Senate, and we have a Camden County election leader on the phone with how important your vote is to this election, but we're going to start right here in house with our political science expert, Dr. Michael Fender. He's an associate professor of political science at the University of North Florida. He has a Ph.D. in political science and has won numerous awards and grants for his work in that field. He joins me now in the studio. And, Doctor, uh, the Republicans, they only need one win to maintain control of the Senate. So which of the candidates do you think has the best shot of potentially getting the win and explain why? I think Purdue probably has a better chance. Uh, he's a little more well-known. He doesn't have quite the baggage that Leffler does. Some of the things that she's been saying has turned off maybe some folks in the middle. But I think this is probably going to be two or nothing. I think the idea of a split's probably pretty unlikely. And, you know, John is joining us live in Georgia, and John has a few questions for you, too. Thank you, Tanika. Dr. Dr. Bender, we, we know that uh, President-elect Biden won Georgia by more than 11,000 votes. We know that Democrats hold a sizable advantage in your early voting. Uh, would you say, then, that Democrats uh, are favored to win this runoff election tomorrow? I certainly wouldn't say that anybody's favored at this point because, as, as we saw in November, early votes are heavily favored toward Democrats this cycle. Tomorrow, Republicans are going to show up in force. Uh, a lot of people have already voted, over 3 million. There's a couple million votes out there, people that have voted in the past but haven't yet. If a lot of Republicans come out, uh, they could easily win. Uh, and and I, think, I think they're probably favored by just a little bit, but this is going to be a really close election. Talk about, talk about what the, some of this infighting. You heard the call of the president with the Republican Secretary of State this weekend. What might that do to turn out tomorrow with Republicans? Well, especially, from the Democratic course. side, the only thing it can do is potentially ri rise it up a little bit, get them excited, because they're staring at claims of 
fraud and claims that things just aren't really what they were, when in fact, you know, the Democrats did win the state. On the Republican side, you run the risk of alienating some of your constituents, either the Trump supporters that are all on for stopping the steal and believe there was so much fraud that the, the vote shouldn't be counted, combined with the moderate Republicans or reasonable Republicans that look at this and said, hey, we had an election, it's over, let's move on, let's worry about maintaining control of the Senate to prevent the radical agenda for the Democrats and Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer and what could happen that way. So you're having that divided message, which is a little bit problematic from the Republicans' perspective. I spoke to a Georgia political expert uh, this morning uh, about the importance of Republicans getting out strongholds, get, you know, going to those counties that are Republican-leaning and really getting out a strong turnout. And he mentioned Southeast Georgia. That really will be pivotal for the Republicans to uh, win this race, won't it? Absolutely. Uh, southeast Georgia, uh, rural parts of, of the western part of Georgia, all of those areas that are heavily Republican and, and lean toward Trump and, and turned out in big numbers in November. Uh, in order for Purdue and Leffler to win, they need those groups to turn out as well. Uh, and they've got to get their act together and show up tomorrow if Republicans want to hold on to these seats. Turn out and turn out big. Dr. Bender, thank you very much for your time and expertise. Tanika. 1992 is the last time that Georgia went blue in the presidential election. And here's a look at the results for that race and of the 2016 and the 2020 elections. And you can see the Democratic base is growing, but mostly in Atlanta and its suburbs. Compared to 1992's election, Biden trailed in most rural counties. Clinton won those rural counties throughout the state. Turnout at the polls tomorrow will determine which party wins this election. On your screen now, a look at turnout for the general election in local counties. It was pretty good, with between 50 and 60 percent showing up to vote. Well, research from the University of Georgia found that voter participation in runoffs drops 20 to 30 percent in many states. So we looked at those numbers and we found that some local counties see a drop in turnout based on early voting of up to 40 percent that's in a normal election this is anything but normal the latest numbers show overwhelming early voter turnout as we've been talking about out of more than three million early votes two million of those have been in person more than 960,000 of them have been mail-in ballots that were accepted to put that into perspective, more than 4 million people voted early in Georgia's general election, so we're almost there. Now, I did talk with the Secretary of State today, as I mentioned, and he had his thoughts on Republican turnout for this election. Speaking as a Republican, is we need to get our people out. We need 900,000 plus voters to come out tomorrow, and if we do that, then our senators, our Republican senators, will be in good shape. And in Georgia, more rural counties have been known to lean Republican. Action News Jax covered six counties in southeast Georgia, all rural and pivotal in this election. Joining me now by phone is Shannon Nettles, the supervisor of elections for Camden County, Georgia. And thank you so much for joining us by phone. The first question, talk about what kind of turnout you're expecting tomorrow and what is the county's plan to address long lines and any issues with machines? Hi, Tanika. Thank you for having me on tonight. Uh, we're at about a 34% turnout right now. I do expect there to be big lines tomorrow, but I think we have enough equipment out that we'll be ready, and we're all uh, ready to go and, and get this election day done and get our voters uh, in, in through the lines as quickly as possible tomorrow. And this is some new information we've been following from today, but the FBI, state law enforcement, they're aware of some specific threats to the state's Senate runoff election tomorrow. Has your county spoken with law enforcement officials or had of any plans to enhance your security? Our, uh, election, our, our police officials and sheriff's office here in Camden County are aware of the election tomorrow, and they will be monitoring it closely at all of our 12 polling places. And I know this was a concern that we saw during the presidential election. So for transparency for your voters and our viewers, how is Camden County handling requests for poll watchers from the political parties? The poll watchers are uh, welcome to visit our precinct. We have uh, name badges available for them, and we have a list of 
all of the poll watchers that plan to turn out tomorrow, and we do have a long list of those. So we'll accommodate them uh, as the law requires, of course. Shannon, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you guys have a safe and successful day of voting. I'm going to send it back to John now in Atlanta. And, John, you've been looking into concerns about election fraud. Absolutely. A lot of talk about alleged voter fraud accusations made by the president and others, but no evidence has been given or found to back up those claims. Same is true in Georgia. Action News Jack's Paige Kelton joins us live now from the newsroom. And Paige, the state's criminal investigators said point blank there was no fraud. Yeah, that's right, John. The Ger uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigation confirmed less than a week ago there was no evidence of fraud in the presidential election. Even the U.S. Justice Department found no evidence of widespread voter fraud. The message to voters in Georgia who are on the verge of electing two senators, your vote will count. Cobb County, Georgia, an audit of 15,000 absentee ballots found only two that were improperly counted. One voter had signed the wrong side of the envelope. The other had their spouse sign the envelope. Uh, I would also note for the record as well that uh, during the course of the audit, there were no fraudulent absentee ballots identified during the process. The Department of Homeland Security and the Justice Department maintain there has been no evidence of widespread fraud or irregularities. The Supreme Court refused to even hear arguments in one of the president's legal challenges. All right, so what's changed since the election? The answer is not much. We might see some state legislatures change laws allowing for earlier vote counting. That way we know the results faster. National election experts say America's voting process works and that recounts, including the recount recently in Georgia, prove that. In the newsroom, Paige Kelton, Fox 30 Action News, Jax. Thank you, Paige. Still ahead, the last time the Democrats won a one-off election was in the 80s. A walk through history and what our political experts say are the chances of history repeating itself in Georgia. Plus, the uphill battle the Democrats would face if they don't win both seats. If Democrats lose, what they would have to do to get anything done on Capitol Hill in the next two years. And another look at the candidates as we head to break. Running for one of Georgia's two U.S. Senate seats, John Ossoff facing Senator David Perdue. He's a Georgia native, the CEO of a media production company that specializes in investigative documentaries. Ossoff supports a public health insurance option and creating a nationwide infrastructure upgrade to help create jobs. Senator David Perdue was born in Macon, Georgia. Most of his career has been spent in the private sector. He was the CEO of Reebok and Dollar General. He was first elected to the Senate in 2014. Perdue supports protecting pre-existing conditions through his PROTECT Act. He supported tax cuts, saying they will spur future economic growth. And we are running against the Bonnie and Clyde of political corruption in America. Where our seat, Kelly's and mine, will determine the direction of our country for the next 50 to 100 years, y'all. To be in the Senate for 10 months, she does not have a case to be made for why the people of Georgia should keep her there. I'm fighting for every single Georgian to live the American dream that I was blessed to live. I know it's dark right now, but can the preacher tell you that morning will come? Candidates on your screen will be the next U.S. Senators representing the state of Georgia. Senator David Perdue is running for re-election against Democrat John Ossoff. Senator Kelly Leffler and Democrat Raphael Warnock will face off tomorrow for the seat that used to be held by Senator Johnny Ivickson. 1992, the last time Georgia went blue in the presidential election. That was the same year a U.S. Senate election in Georgia went to a runoff. Incumbent uh, Democrat Senator Weish Fowler lost his bid for re-election to Republican Paul Coverdell. It was a razor-thin margin. It wasn't as pivotal because the Democrats still controlled the House and the Senate that year, despite the outcome. But for the last 15 years, both of Georgia's U.S. Senators have been Republican. And much different in this case, John. So we're going to bring back political science expert Dr. Michael Bender. Dr. Bender, across several states, we saw them go for Biden. But Republicans won the Senate seats across a lot of those same states. So Democrats really can't take anything for granted here. Oh, absolutely not. And, and I think we're seeing that both parties are really geared up advertising, virtually knocking on doors, actually knocking on doors, texting, getting folks out to vote. 
for their side because they know getting their people to the polls is really what's going to determine this. And let's talk about that turnout. You mentioned the calls, uh, the text, um, flyers, the historic amounts of money being poured into this election. How do you think that that's going to impact turnout? Because we know, generally speaking, turnout is lower for a runoff sure. than a general. It's going to help it, and, and we're seeing that. If you have a special election where you're looking at maybe three quarters of the amount of people that showed up during a general election, that's out of that's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's better than a standard midterm election when senators are regularly on the ballot. So all this money, all these advertisements that we're seeing on the commercial breaks, all of that is going to gin up turnout, get people aware of it, know the importance of the race, that their vote really does matter. It really is important. It's going to get them to show up. All right, Dr. Bender, thanks so much for joining us. And now we're going to have more on what's at stake here, John. Yes, if the Democrats win both seats, they can assert authority and control over the decisions being made for the country for the next two years before the next election. Winning both seats would evenly balance power in the Senate. And then, of course, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris would eventually be the tie-breaking vote in favor of the Democrats. Now, if they only win one seat, Democrats would have to convince at least two Republicans to vote across the aisle. And plus, groups that were in the minority are putting in the work to show power in numbers at the polls. The two groups in Georgia that could determine the outcome of this election, that's next. Also, expect long lines and some delays if you are planning to vote tomorrow. What you need to know before you head to the polls. Here's another look at the candidates running for one of Georgia's two U.S. Senate seats. Raphael Warnock wants to fill the seat formerly held by Senator Johnny Isaacson. Warnock is an ordained minister who serves at the church where Dr. King used to preach. He's an advocate for Medicaid expansion and wants to help small businesses get access to capital, particularly those owned by minorities and women. Senator Kelly Leffler was appointed to that seat by Governor Brian Kemp when Isaacson retired unexpectedly. Before that, she worked in the financial services sector. She's the co-owner of the WNBA team, the Atlanta Spirit. Leffler supports making prescription drug prices more affordable and wants to advance pro-growth economic policies. Candidates on your screen will become the next U.S. Senators representing the state of Georgia. Senator David Perdue is running for re-election against Democrat John Ossoff. Senator Kelly Leffler and Democrat Raphael Warnock will face off tomorrow for the seat that used to be held by Senator Johnny Isaacson. Polls open at 7 a.m. And John Bachman has been at the state capitol all day getting new information about who is expected to show up to the polls tomorrow, John. In November, Georgia became a blue state for the first time in 28 years. That's mostly because of wealthy, educated, and older voters in Atlanta and its surrounding suburbs, along with others. But for the runoff, two other groups are flexing their power at the polls, Latinos and young Republicans. Please get out the vote. We need to save America. Meet Deanna Harris. She's chairwoman of the Cobb County Young Republicans. And as you can see, um, I'm an African-American female, which is not atypical for a Republican voter. Um, so we want to be able to get our messaging to those people, those individuals that look like myself, and, um, and draw them over to our side. She says in order to win, the GOP has to show they're diverse and embody what's important to the young conservative. These are people who are starting families and getting to you know paying taxes or if they're small business owners. Um, so if we can target that messaging for policy. Latinos are also leading the charge to get out the vote. We just finished knocking on 67 doors. Latinos now make up about 10% of the state's population. For 17 years, groups like Galeo have worked to promote civic engagement and leadership development in the Latino community, and it's working. Latinos in Georgia uh, that are registered to vote are showing up to vote and are really participating in our democracy. In 2003, there were 10,000 registered Latino voters in Georgia. Now it's estimated to be well over 250,000, with the majority of them being millennial. It feels great to see that we have a lot of younger Latinos who are really trying to go vote, and not only that, helping their parents go vote. One in ten Georgia voters are naturalized citizens, and at naturalization ceremonies in Georgia, groups like Galeo register them to vote on the same day they become U.S. citizens. I like to ask 
do you know or care about anyone who is a resident um, or someone who might be undocumented? And if your answer is yes, your ballot should reflect that. Of Georgia's 159 counties, only DeKalb has voluntarily made sample ballots available in Spanish and Korean. Gwinnett County was federally mandated to offer ballots in Spanish due to the Voting Rights Act. We think after the next uh, census, uh, we're going to see other counties and jurisdictions have to comply with the Voting Rights Act and provide English and Spanish and possibly other languages as well as for full voting rights. If you plan to vote tomorrow, let's run down what you need to know before you go. First and foremost, the polls open at 7 a.m. If you are in line before the polls close, you will be allowed to stay in line and vote. Know your designated polling location as well. You'll need to show a photo ID. If you don't have an ID, you will be given a provisional ballot. You just need to show proof of a proper ID and voting eligibility within three days after the election for that ballot to be counted. Tanika. And remember, Action News Jax has nonstop coverage of Election 2020 and the fight for the Senate on ActionNewsJax.com. Take us on the go by downloading the free mobile app in your app store. Watch us on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku 24 hours a day. We will see you again tonight on Fox 30 at 10 and 11 on CBS 47. Thanks for joining us. the Action News Jacks Election 2020 Special. Fight for the Senate. Georgia. Three